Okay folks, let's get started. This is a British infantryman from the D-Day British collection, undercoated in German camel, black brown, which as you all know is also going to be the shade colour for a large part of the figure. So, base colour, without too many surprises, English uniform. So, we're going to start following the folds and creases of the uniform. Now, you want to be keeping the paint wet enough for it just to flow off the brush, but give a good solid coverage. You'll notice that I kind of block it in, go over all the obvious creases are in paint in the higher areas and then I, I try and join the blocks so to speak so that I'm only leaving shade down in the creases and the folds. Some of the um, raised areas on these trousers, they're really small. You know, so you just want to lightly be touching the figure and the paint should just flow off the brush where it's the right consistency. So once again, I'm doing some blocking in, covering those areas that I know are not going to be shade. And then I can go back and join the blocks. You don't want too much shade, the shade's there to provide shape, to provide depth, help create contrast. But the main colour you want to be seeing is this uniform colour. Now, the arms will be very similar. The next thing to consider is all these little bits of detail that we can see. So we've got a collar, always remember that goes all the way around the figure guys, so you'll need to paint it on the back as well. Just refresh the brush a little, but you've also got a lot going on here. Um, There are lots of pockets and straps and webbing and all kind of things, so you have to give some thought to what is a strap, what is webbing and what are pockets. And that's what I've done there. And it is as simple as a little blob, 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 nothing more complex than that. 
and then you've also got around round the back again. Let's finish the collar and then typically there'll be a little bit of uniform visible between the backpack and the collar. So there you go folks. I'm going to just keep repeating this across the rest of the figure and then move on to the highlights. Base colours, the uniform are on and you can see, especially on the trousers, there's a lot of shade there. Um, on the arms, you've got your typical sort of creases on the arms and then you've got a lot going on in the front of the tunic. And there's other details like there's a pocket on the trousers as well as collar on the back. So you just got to pick all these things out, get them clear in your mind and then we'll move on to applying a very small amount of highlight colour and in this case it is old wood. So using really small brush for this, the brush has to be nice and wet because we want this paint to be just flowing off the brush, we don't want to be dragging off the brush. So here I'm going to be catching top edge and front edge of the collar. And then I'm just going to be putting a little dot of highlight on the areas we previously picked out for all these hundreds of little pieces of fabric that make up the front of the check. This is where the brush has to be suitably wet. If you don't, if it's too wet, it'll just flood these tiny bits of detail. If it's too dry, it's not going to flow off in a nice neat line. Now, for these creases on the trousers, I want to be placing the highlight over the shade. And then the brush is actually a bit dry there. So I'm adding just a touch of water and go back to the palette. But it's still coming out dry. Okay, let's try that. So that's what you want to be seeing, folks. See, it's just flowing off the brush. It's going onto the figure, but staying exactly where you want it to go. flowing off and giving a nice solid line. I'll see if this is quite tricky painting at this angle. But you can see I'm painting a lot of little lines but you can do it quickly. It's not a it's not, it doesn't have to be an incredibly slow, laborious task where you're using magnifying glasses or, or any such thing. And I would be painting this a lot quicker if I could paint it at what is a more natural kind of angle for me. Because you really want to be moving the figure around so that you don't have to reach around parts of the figures to try and get the right angle. And you see here it's really just a simple case of getting some lines on and as well 
you'll notice that I'm putting a highlight right beside the shade. It's not something which is supposed to sit on the highest point of the figure. By placing it right beside the shade you're going to get the greatest possible contrast. And that is what's going to give you the depth that you need. And I'll just put a bit of highlight on the little shoulder boards there. But there you go. It's starting to come alive now. So these guys have got a lot going on in terms of backpacks and webbing and things. And the colour we're going to use for this is, if I can get it in shot, my apologies, green grey. The highlight colour is Splinter Camo Base. So, let's start with the gators. Not a difficult process here. Just bear in mind that on the side of the gator there'll be a little uh, flap or a buckle, excuse me folks, I'm just going to have to try and get around the inside here. Yeah, there'll typically be a joint on the side of the gators. And gators can also go over the top of the shoe a little bit as well. As we can see there. And I've got to freshen the brush up there folks, that's quite dry. I went a bit off, never mind. Right, now, lots of details, so you can see a bit of webbing. A strap. And then there's a lot going on here. We've got these ammo pouches. Now you notice I'm leaving some internal shade there, not just leaving shade around them. Because that's going to really help these pieces of detail pop. I've got to fresh my brush up there, it's getting quite thick and claggy. Okay, so this bit of belt in there. And then we've got the water bottle. Which is a very particular shape. We have the entrenching tool. You can see it's got straps going around the handle there. And then you've got the backpack, which has got quite a lot going on here, so.
press it too dry. And see I'm leaving that tiny little line, that just gives a bit more shape to an otherwise flat surface. And then here we've got the sort of the front flap and we've got buckles and all kind of things going on. I'm leaving a bit of internal space on that, uh, internal shade rather, on that too. And then we've got the sides. Keep that brush fresh, it's getting a bit dry. I think it might be the proximity of the light. And filling in that panel but we've got plenty of shade left in there just to confirm to the eye what the shape of the backpack is and then lastly the satchel here Just leaving internal shade again. And there you go, folks. That's the base colour on all the webbing. Now for the highlight, go back to our tiny little brush make sure the paint is nice and fluid but not runny okay so let's just capture that edge accentuate that little bit of shade that we left on there just hit the high spots on these buckles and on the front of that flap around the outside need to freshen up that brush having real issues with it today Go around the outside, then the inside of the spade holder. See, sometimes I'm doing lines, sometimes if I'm not blocking at all, apologies, sometimes I'm doing lines, sometimes I'm doing dots, depending on what it is I'm painting. Accentuate the joint there between the gaiters. Did that one on a bit too strong there? And then we've got the water bottle, so I just want to catch. Corners Freshen it up a bit Because we're going to need to put just some tiny little Bits of highlight On the front The features are all quite small. But you can see this is quite a strong highlight colour, so it stands out. And there you go, you can see that's quite you know, quite a good contrast, it really quite pops out. 
and really help define the shape. Right, next to the metallic and the grey, which there isn't very much on this figure. So for the German grey it is, as for the German the grey is German grey. The black is black. So here we're going to be painting the boots. I'm going to be cutting right into the gaiters and right into the where it contacts with the base, but try and avoid putting it onto the base because black is quite a strong colour. But we don't want to outline it in dark brown as we have been doing with the rest of the figure. And then the rifle's got a few metallic parts, there's obviously the, the muzzle. band here and then you've got the magazine and the breech. You know what there's actually sometimes you only notice this as you're going there's a there is a ammunition ammunition pouch there so I'm just gonna go and paint that. Do that just now whilst the black is drying. You can see there's a, a pouch underneath the rifle that goes right over. The top of the rifle. So fills in a little gap in the figure where you couldn't paint it metallic and the metallic kind of colours, it just wouldn't make sense, but it makes sense now we know what it is. So the dark grey, I'm just putting a wee blob on the front of the, uh, the a front of the um, the boots and on the heels where they're visible and then a bit more carefully just try to catch the raised areas on the rifle. Simple as that, and then we need to put a highlight on the rifles, on the metallic parts rather, rather than just the grey parts or the black parts. So this is London grey. This is going to be a tiny little amount because it's quite a strong contrast over a, what is a black base colour. So. Just getting the paint nice and thin and then just little touches. Simple as that, but it really pops now. Don't forget the top, you'll be looking down on these figures, remember? Simple as that. And then just see if I could put if that highlight colour left on the palette. Tiny wee highlight line there. So, that's it for greys and metallics. Now we'll be on to the rest of the rifle. So, first colour for the rifles, flat earth. And then, what will be the most, how do you put it, it's not so much a highlight, but it's the main colour is going to be this, uh, or any, any other similar uh, figure will do, folks. But, um, let me see, I think I, I would, potentially in the past I've used 
uh, Panzer Aces New Wood as well. It's a very similar kind of colour, but in this case it's game colour heavy ochre. So, starting with the flat earth. <coughs> I try and observe the shape of the rifle here. Leave some internal shades. See them painted the side, then I'll paint the top. Oops, excuse me, folks. A little bit of an awkward angle, but I need to go in quite flat on this to make sure I leave some internal shade. And then I just want to put a bit more on top here. to reduce the amount of shade between the rifle and the arm. Don't want to be leaving too much. Oh, and I nearly forgot, folks. Don't forget the butt. And then the shade. And we Normally the shade, the highlight, normally I just put small highlight colours on, but for this I want this to be my main colour. You notice this brown doesn't really jump out of the figure, so it's more of a sort of extra layer of shading. That's a bit dry that paint. You know, so the flat F is more just a little bit of extra shading in this is the main colour. Quite far removed from a natural sort of rifle colour, but it helps just make it pop. Now there's a lot going on with these helmets. First of all, there's an overall base colour, which is from a British Metallics is Russian Infantry, World War II. So this needs to dry and then it will need another coat. As that is drying I've painted the rifle strap with medium grey and the entrenching tool handle with German Camo medium brown if you can even read that. And it's ready for one more coat now. And then we'll start to do something with all this detail that's on the helmet. Okay, there's a nice solid coat of green on that, because I want the helmet to look green. But now, I'm going to have to account for all this like webbing and such like. So, using the splinter camouflage base, I'm just going to go around and put some dots on. I'm putting some of these on a little bit heavier than I would like to, just because of this awkward position. Just little dots. Like that. Right, and then, I need to take the German Camel Black Brown again. and pick out some larger features and now you've got a bit of artistic license here just look at the the helmet itself and decide what is a larger feature and what isn't If you put any blob 
tips of the splinter base colour that were too big and now's your chance to knock them back a bit, make them a large feature and cover them with the black brown there we go now going back to the old woods Prep in the brush. Oh, excuse me. And then being careful to leave some of the shade colour. Let's paint over those blobs. So here we're trying to create the impression of a green helmet with webbing and strips. And then but going back to um, Iraqi sand, I'm going to put quite a bold highlight on this just to really help it. Pop out. And there you go, that's the the helmet done. So there's quite a lot going on there and oops, quite a lot going on there and it looks suitably uh, suitably green for a helmet. So finishing touches now is going to be the skin. So for the skin, the base colour is German camo pale brown. You'll just have to take my word for that. A bronze flesh tone. Any similar colour will do for that. And then flat flesh, which is really for that final highlight. So. Just getting the paint ready and the palette and then not worried about internal shading within the hand. We don't have to leave brown lines between the fingers or, or such like because then it just looks a bit too busy and stripy and we're going to be adding plenty of highlight. Now but paint face is the same way every time. Always start on the middle, brow, nose, lips, and chins. Chins, I suppose. Some people have got more than one chin. Um, I'm heading that way myself. And then cheeks. Now I don't want to be leaving a lot of shade colour here, but I have left enough just to start the, the shape of the face. We all, as human beings, all recognise faces through certain things, so just put those certain things into your figure, like nose, eyes, chins, all these kind of things, and the viewer's mind will do the rest for you. So this is going to be our main colour. I'm not concerned about leaving too much of that pale, uh, camel pale uh, brown colour visible. And you can see some of it. The most important point in that respect is you're not seeing the really, really dark shade colour because the pale brown is taking care of it. So we can have a nice bright aspect to the hands and uh, faces. 
So tricky bit now, this is going to be a challenge painting at this angle so brush has a bit dry there And I can see oh, the thumb up a bit, and there's a little ear there, a little ear there, helps add to that shape that we all know of being the human head. Okay, so I'm now going into the flat flesh, which is a really strong highlight, making sure that the paint is going to just flow off the brush and not go anywhere else. Just going to touch the top of the thumb. Index finger there because it's finger on the trigger so to speak. Along the top of the hand and that will do for that. The rest of the fingers are down in shade. Top of those fingers, top of the thumb. And then the trickier bit. Tiny wee bit there in the nose. Chin and lip. And then just down the side of the cheeks. Just to help frame the features a bit more. And there you go folks, he's brown, but he's interesting, there's a lot going on and you can clearly see the shape of all the different components of the figure. So I'll take you over to look at a completed motor platoon um, and see what these guys look like on the tabletop. So there's our completed figure. Everything is nicely defined, got the equipment, the webbing and such like is standing out nicely against the uniform. I'm a bit too close for the focus to work there but uh, that's hopefully a good view of the kind of definition you can achieve and you can see the folds on the clothing. And then you've got a completed platoon, a motor platoon here. And you can see the, the definition everywhere on the faces and the equipment. Around the pockets, on the uniform. Let's have a closer look at our base. You can see the face is quite nicely defined but not too stark. Remember these guys are going to be viewed from further away than I'm currently looking at them. And you can see the shade and highlight on the trousers are just enough to define the shape without making it look stripy. And the packs stand out really well with some nice shading and highlighting. So you can see individual components to help bring the figure to life on the tabletop. So there you go guys, there's British Infantry, ready for Normandy, working away through this Normandy town, trying to find a way past the German defences at Caen. Hopefully this will give you some ideas of how you yourself can get your own infantry onto the tabletop. Thanks for watching again folks and there will be more of these how to paint 15mm flames of war figures 
and the near future.